Anasati Pali, Sanskrit, Anamriti means recollection, contemplation, remembrance, meditation, and mindfulness. It refers to specific meditative or devotional practices, such as recollecting the sublime qualities of the Buddha, which lead to mental tranquility and abiding joy. In various contexts, the Pali literature and Sanskrit Mahayana sutras emphasize and identify different enumerations of recollections. Anasati may also refer to meditative attainment, such as the ability to recollect past lives, also called casual memory. Nota The Three Recollections The Three Recollections Recollection of the Buddha, Pali Buddhanasati, Skt. Buddhanasmurta, Tib. Sans Argyas Rjes Su Dran Pa. Recollection of the Dhamma, Pali Dhammanasati, Skt. Dharmanusmrta, Tib. Chose Rjes Su Dran Pa. Recollection of the Sangha, Pali Sanghanasati, Skt. Sanghanasmrta, Tib. Dgehdunrjes Su Dran Pa. The Dhammapada declares that the Buddha's disciples who constantly practice recollection of the Three Jewels ever awaken happily. According to the Theragatha, such a practice will lead to the height of continual joy. Unlike other subjects of meditative recollection mentioned in this article, the Three Jewels are considered devotional contemplations. The Three Jewels are listed as the first three subjects of recollection for each of the following lists as well. Topic recollection of the Buddha The standard formula when recollecting the Buddha is, iti pi so bhagava araham sama sambado viakarana sampano sugato lokavidu anataro porasadamasarathi satha devamanasanam bado bhagava tiandid, the blessed one is worthy and rightly self-awakened, consummate in knowledge and conduct, well gone, an expert with regard to the world, unexcelled as a trainer for those people fit to be tamed, the teacher of divine and human beings, awakened, blessed, it has been suggested that the recollection of the Buddha identified in the Theravada canon might have been the basis for the more elaborately visual contemplations typical of Tibetan Buddhism. Another way of saying worthy is that the Tathagata is the pure one. Well gone can also be interpreted as the accomplished one, or the welfarer. Blessed could be replaced by the word holy, but he was also often referred to as the Blessed One. <inaudible> Recollection of the Dhamma The teaching of the Buddha has six supreme qualities Svakato Sanskrit, Svakyata, well proclaimed, or self announced. The Buddha's teaching is not a speculative philosophy but an exposition of the universal law of nature based on a causal analysis of natural phenomena. It is taught, therefore, as a science rather than a sectarian belief system. Full comprehension enlightenment of the teaching may take varying lengths of time but Buddhists traditionally say that the course of study is excellent in the beginning sila, Sanskrit sila, moral principles, excellent in the middle samadhi, concentration, and excellent in the end panya Sanskrit prajna. Wisdom. Sandithiko Sanskrit, samdarstika, able to be examined. The Dharma is open to scientific and other types of scrutiny and is not based on faith. It can be tested by personal practice and one who follows it will see the result for oneself by means of one's own experience. Sandithiko comes from the word Sandithika which means visible in this world and is derived from the word Sandithi. Since Dhamma is visible, it can be seen, known and be experienced within one's life. Akaliko Sanskrit, Akalika, timeless, immediate. The Dhamma is able to bestow timeless and immediate results here and now. There is no need to wait for the future or a next existence. 
The dhamma does not change over time and it is not relative to time. Ihipasiko Sanskrit, Ihipasika, which you can come and see. From the phrase Ehi, Pasya, come, see. The Dhamma invites all beings to put it to the test and come see for themselves. Opanayiko Sanskrit, Avapranayika, leading one close to. Followed as a part of one's life the Dhamma leads one to liberation. In the Vishuddhamaga, this is also referred to as Upanayanam. Opanayiko means to be brought inside oneself. This can be understood with an analogy as follows. If one says a ripe mango tastes delicious, and if several people listen and come to believe it, they would imagine the taste of the mango according to their previous experiences of other delicious mangoes. Yet, they will still not really know exactly how this mango tastes. Also, if there is a person who has never tasted a ripe mango before, that person has no way of knowing exactly for himself how it tastes. So, the only way to know the exact taste is to experience it. In the same way, Dhamma is said to be opanayiko which means that a person needs to experience it within to see exactly what it is. Pakatam veditabo vinyuhi Sanskrit, prachatmam veditavyo vijnyai, to be meant to perceive directly. The Dhamma can be perfectly realized only by the noble disciples Pali, Ariya Pugala, who have matured in supreme wisdom. No one can enlighten another person. Each intelligent person has to attain and experience for themselves. As an analogy, no one can simply make another know how to swim. Each person individually has to learn how to swim. In the same way, Dhamma cannot be transferred or bestowed upon someone. Each one has to know for themselves. Knowing these attributes, Buddhists believe that they will attain the greatest peace and happiness through the practice of the Dhamma. Therefore, each person is fully responsible for his or herself to put it into practice for real. Here the Buddha is compared to an experienced and skillful doctor, and the Dhamma to proper medicine. However efficient the doctor or wonderful the medicine may be, the patients cannot be cured unless they take the medicine properly. So the practice of the Dhamma is the only way to attain the final deliverance of Nibbana. These teachings ranged from understanding karma Pali, kama, literal meaning action, and developing good impressions in one's mind, to reach full enlightenment by recognizing the nature of mind. <inaudible> Recollection of the Sangha The standard formula when recollecting the Sangha is the Sangha of the Blessed One's disciples who have practiced well, who have practiced straightforwardly, who have practiced methodically, who have practiced masterfully, in other words, the four types of noble disciples when taken as pairs, the eight when taken as individual types, they are the Sangha of the Blessed One's disciples, worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of respect, the incomparable field of merit for the world. Practicing masterfully, or practicing with integrity, means sharing what they have learned with others. The Five Recollections On a Buddhist Sabbath day, in addition to practicing the eight precepts, the Buddha enjoined a disciple to engage in one or more of five recollections. Recollection of the Buddha Recollection of the Dhamma Recollection of the Sangha Recollection of Virtue Recollection of Deva virtues according to the Buddha, for one who practices such recollections, his mind is calmed, and joy arises, the defilements of his mind are abandoned. The six recollections The six recollections are 
Recollection of the Buddha Recollection of the Dhamma Recollection of the Sangha Recollection of Generosity Recollection of Virtue Recollection of Deva Virtues The Buddha tells a disciple that the mind of one who practices these recollections is not overcome with passion, not overcome with aversion, not overcome with delusion. His mind heads straight. gains joy connected with the Dhamma. Rapture arises. The body grows calm. Experiences ease. The mind becomes concentrated. In Mahayana practice, the first six recollections were commonly taught and the Buddha Anamriti was particularly emphasized in many popular sutras such as the Medicine Buddha Sutra. The Ten Recollections As ten recollections, the following are added to the six recollections. Recollection of death Maranasati. Recollection of the body Kayagatasati. Recollection of the breath Anapanasati. Recollection of peace Upasamanasati. In the Pali Canon's Angatara Nikaya, it is stated that the practice of any one of these ten recollections leads to nirvana. The Visuddhimagga identifies the ten recollections as useful meditation subjects for developing concentration needed to suppress and destroy the five hindrances during one's pursuit of nibbana. In terms of the development of meditative absorption, mindfulness of the breath can lead to all four jhanas, mindfulness of the body can lead only to the first jhana, while the eight other recollections culminate in pre jhanic access concentration. Upakara Samadhi, the recollection of death is connected with the Buddhist concept of not-self, devotees recollect on the inevitability of their own demise, and in that way learn to understand that their physical body is not a permanent self. To often reflect in such a way, is believed to strongly affect the devotee's motivations and priorities in life, and to help the devotee become more realistic. Topic. See also Buddhist meditation Kamatana 40 classic meditation subjects, including the Ten Recollections Rebirth, Buddhism Three Jewels, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha Upajatana Sutta Five Remembrances Topic notes carrot for one accomplished in meditative concentration there is the possibility of attaining the recollection of one's own past lives pubhanivasanasati in this case anasati is not a meditative subject to achieve jhanic absorption or devotional bliss it is the actual fruit of practice an example of one who has achieved such a power is described in the following manner by the Buddha in the Lohika Sutta DN 12, with his mind thus concentrated, purified, and bright, unblemished, free from defects, pliant, malleable, steady, and attained to imperturbability, he directs and inclines it to knowledge of the recollection of past lives lit, previous homes. He recollects his manifold past lives, i.e., one birth, two births, three births, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, one hundred, one thousand, one hundred thousand, many eons of cosmic contraction, many eons of cosmic expansion, many eons of cosmic contraction and expansion, recollecting, there I had such a name, belonged to such a clan, had such an appearance. Such was my food, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such the end of my life. Passing away from that state, I re-arose there. There too I had such a name, belonged to such a clan, had such an appearance. Such was my food, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such the end of my life. Passing away from that state, I re-arose here. Thus he recollects his manifold past lives in their modes and details. <laughs>